we have an exciting topic for our Genuine Diamonds in Arkansas YouTube channel today. We're talking about the third largest diamond found at the crater since that site became a state park in 1972. So we're talking in, in 48 years, this is the third largest diamond found there. It's an 8.66 carat white and it was found in August, August 27th of 2011 by Beth Gilbertson, formerly of Salida, Colorado. She moved here. I'm going to scroll down. This is the headlines. The day after she found that diamond, news spread all over. And this is one of the reports. And uh, here's a picture of Beth holding her diamond. And uh, she found it north of the North Wash Station in the Beatty's Hill area. Uh, the article tells that after she saw the Travel Channel's the best places to find cash and treasures, which included a segment about the crater at Diamond State Park, uh, Beth Gilbertson became a regular visitor to the park. And on Monday she was scraping gravel out of the drainage ditch on Beatty's Hill and uh, found this diamond. So. Uh, I had the privilege earlier today of interviewing Beth and getting her first-hand account of how she found the third largest diamond that's been found there since it became a state park in 72. Uh, here's the picture the park took uh, right after it was found, but I'm going to show you a bunch of pictures I just recently took. Uh, she named it the Illusion Diamond, and this kind of has an illusion to it, and uh, anyway, it's a good good name for it, um, jaw-dropping icy white metallic luster they were talking and then here it is next to an Arkansas quarter and this has the image of a cut diamond on the quarter and then this shows you for size comparison how how big her 866 is, it, it really is a huge diamond uh, there are white, yellow, and brown diamonds found at the park, and this this is a white, and a, a lovely large white. But let's skip over and start looking at the photos that I took of this diamond. Let me kind of re-center here so you can uh, enjoy these pictures along with me. So, uh, this, this is a unique shape diamond. But it's really lovely. It has these natural contours here. Look how this goes down here and it creates a face on this side. And then it's got another line there and it, there's kind of a point or a nose there. And you can't tell it, but there's a point here. See how this growth, that line and that line, it uh, kind of makes a bullet nose shape there. But anyway, this is really a lovely diamond. We'll turn it and get different views of it. So this almost looks like a different diamond, but it's not. It's just turned differently. And then you can see this point and this line along here. This is your telltale sign that it's a diamond. Besides the fact of a natural luster, see how bright uh, reflection it's got there. But these lines on here are a characteristic of the di of a diamond crystal. Uh, this is just another unique shape. It's turned just a little, and this is kind of an indention, a growth in. It, it's very, very unique. It's a very special diamond. Uh, just another way to turn it and look at it. It looks like there is some graphite in it. Um, most people would say, oh, it's got a carbon inclusion. Well, actually, I'm thinking that's graphite, which is just undeveloped. I mean, the whole thing is carbon. A diamond is 100% carbon. Wow, by zooming in, you can see these lines in here. It's really, really pretty. But uh, anyway, uh, it's got a little bit of inclusion to it, but it's it's just character. Uh, it, it's really a fine specimen and very unique. Now it looks like there's a black spot here, but there's not. That's just the way it treats the light going in there. It has to sit on something. Well, it's sitting on white paper, but it's so clear and the way it reflects light, light coming in. I had two lights on this, one to the right and one to the left, because see, you, you see a shadow on the right and a shadow on the left. 
and just the way it lit everything, it left a dark spot in the middle, but that is not a flaw in the diamond. And look, you can see kind of a bull nose over here and here. And if you look, there's one back here as well. It's, it's very special. Uh, it's not completely rounded. It's more of a flattened crystal, which is nice. It has a wider footprint that way. Now here, it, I mean, it looks like I almost brought a different diamond in for you to see, but uh, it really comes out to a nice point here. Look at these lovely curves, and uh, it's just icy clean. It's a lovely gem. Oh, <laughs> and now this is actually a bucket of glass at the Crater of Diamonds, and I wanted to throw this in here because Beth mentioned when she first found it, she thought it was a piece of glass because a lot of glass is found at the park, as you can tell. Brown, white, green, other pieces of broken glass, people bring it in. Um, and because it was so large, she had found other diamonds before. And she has now found a total of 70 at the crater so far. That's 7 with a 0, not 17, but 70. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, most of the diamonds you find are small. Most of them, are, one out of every 33 diamonds is under a carat. Well, she found this, and it was so clear, so clean, she thought it could be, you know, broken glass at first. Uh, but uh, then when you look closer and see these lovely shapes on there, you realize it's not glass. But at first, she, I guess she thought, well, hey, it's so big, <laughs> it's so clear, it must be glass. And she didn't look at it real close, but upon closer inspection and showing it to another person there, she realized it wasn't glass but it was diamond and uh, look at this other piece of diamond uh, other view of diamond while I say I've seen a lot of people out at the crater of diamonds especially in the summer they want to take their shoes off and go barefoot in the park don't do it because there is glass out there because people are trashy and and they leave their trash in the park and the park tries to pick it up but uh, broken glass is really would be a terrible thing to step on if you were barefoot. Well, all right, on to another subject uh, of this lovely diamond. Um, this really shows the sharp point. It seems like every way you turn it, it looks like a different diamond. But um, we'll, we'll look at some of the character characteristics. Just turn it a little bit more, get a different view. Uh, see, this is pretty here. Now, there's kind of this notch in here and it could be when this crystal was formed over 100 miles deep in the earth it sat on something as it grew uh, so this could be where it sat on a host rock and then the diamond the formed around it and uh, this was still left after it intruded um, the host rock disappeared but so you can see this notch a little more. But it it's almost like a navel, you know. Um, our navels just show that uh, we, we had a birth in the past. And this could be a birthmark as far as uh, it sat on a host rock and grew onto it. Uh, I don't know if you've ever done the old experiment that we did when I was a, a kid way back. But uh, you would mix up a sugar solution of water and put a string in it and then let it set. Uh, you dangle the string from a pencil or something tied to it and hang it in the water and sugar crystals would form on that string. Well, um, diamond crystal is kind of like that. It forms on a host and uh, it almost seems as though it you know, formed on a string and then the string disappeared. But anyway, to go on and look at some of its features, so you can see this nose here, and this, it's, it's not a real point, you know, as far as sharp, but a nose here, and then you can see the one in the back as well. So it's good to turn it in all directions, and look how it just catches the light. You can see the luster. It's really a, a shiny, clean diamond. And uh, now here, it seems as though there is an inclusion, maybe even a, graphite inclusion okay now this is graphite but this is almost uh, 
a, a ghost inclusion, and, and this looks almost like a little cloud inclusion, but the flaws are minimal, and they're really just speak more of its character rather than detracting from the value, because look, look how ice clean and perfect so much of this diamond is, and like I say, it's huge. It's, uh, I, I love that picture. That is really a nice angle. Look at that. Um, this, this comes out and shows the lovely curves here and that nice point there. Um, so it, it's a very special diamond. And this, this too looks really good, like that. And then you can see this inclusion or like graphite here. But it's just, um, speaking of its uniqueness, I mean, there's no other diamond crystal on earth like it. And I'll tell you, it, it's very rare in that it is the third largest out of 33,856 diamonds that have been found there since it became a state park in 1972. I mean, as of today, that's the, the statistics. 33,856 diamonds have been found in the last 48 years, and this is the third largest. And Beth Gilbertson found it, and uh, she gave me a personal interview today and told me the whole story so be sure to watch that video on YouTube as well as we okay we're looking at just more angles of this diamond but so we've looked at the diamond but how does it how big is it well you need to put it next to a dime for size comparison and it compares well with the dime uh, so it is really very large they tell you when you're searching for diamonds to look for something the size of a match head well this is much bigger than a match head. This is bigger than your average bear. So th this is really a pretty view of it, I think. Uh, a bullet. <laughs> the silver bullet. No, there's another diamond named that. But anyway, it, it really has a lovely shape to it. Now, to take that, instead of sitting it next to the dime, I set it on top of the dime and it pretty well covers it. It almost touches here, it overlaps a little bit here, and it almost touches the corner there. So it's pretty well uh, the size of a dime. And then here, I liked it with the word liberty showing at the top because if you found one that size, you'd feel like it really gave you some financial liberty if you could uh, turn around and sell it then. And, um, but uh, I like this shot. I was very pleased with the way that turned out um, sitting on that dime like that. But we also want to compare it to the Arkansas Quarter because as I said it, it has the image of a cut diamond on there in honor of the Crater Diamond State Park. That's why it was on there. This is also rice and this is ducks. So that's what Arkansas is known for. Our rice production the ducks down in the Mississippi Delta area, and then the diamonds in southwest Arkansas, Crater Diamond State Park. So here's, here's the diamond. It's not a great picture of the quarter because it's behind an acrylic glass in the shot, but it, it's a good picture of the Illusion Diamond. 8.66 carats, found by Beth Gilbertson in April 27, 2011. So I'll, I'll end up with this shot because that's my most favorite of it, but uh, this state park for just a mere $10 a day for adults allows you to keep all the diamonds that you find and some of them are very big. I've, I have found 176 diamonds at the park so far and this one is four times bigger than my largest. I mean, I found a 213 was my largest. You take that times four, and this 866 is bigger than, like, putting four of my biggest ones together. So it's really a remarkable find, and I'm happy for Beth that she uh, found such a big, lovely, unique diamond, and they left it uncut so you can enjoy uh, the natural form. And this is now in the Sam and Dolly Johnson diamond collection um, along with some other diamonds but of course this is their largest in the collection um, but they they have a, a 
a large collection and there I've done another video uh, you can look for it on YouTube where I interviewed Sam and he showed me he kind of gave me a tour of his diamond collection and uh, but I wanted you to see this one up close so I took a bunch of snapshots and then had a chance to uh, look at it really good so this is a very special Beth Gilbertson's Illusion Diamond, the third largest since the site became a state park in 72. Thanks for taking a look at it with me.